All right. It is uh, time for us to begin. And as I like to say each, uh, each week as we enter into our worship time that uh, during the ringing of the bell and the prelude, we invite people to be quiet and prayerful, inviting God to meet with you during this time of worship. So let us prepare our hearts now for worship. Greetings, Presbyterian Church of Dover, members, friends, those who are here in person, those that are participating online. It's great to have everyone here as part of our worship. Um, I would invite those that are here in person, if you sign the friendship or the fellowship registry and pass that back and forth, that would be good. There's not a whole lot in the way of special announcements. The events that are taking place during the week are listed in the bulletin, and you can see that. Um, otherwise, it's a, I guess, normal week in the life of the church. As I like to begin our worship services each week before we pass the peace, I'd just like to remind us that whoever you are, 
and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. And we do pray that the transforming love of Jesus might touch your life today. We will pass the peace, but we will continue to remain in our pews to do so. Um, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pass the peace. Please join me in the call to worship as we read responsively. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Join me now in the opening prayer. God, our creator, as we gather now for worship, we acknowledge that the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of earth. So we ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you might kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand for the hymn of praise, number 289.
Let us call in the name of the one who invites us to speak the truth about ourselves and our relationships and promises to show us mercy. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, we do not know how to pray as we ought, and we know too well our constant failures to do as you have commanded and to hold fast to your word. Forgive us for the divisions we nurture, guide us to your way, keep us in your care, and lead us into faith. We trust your word that the spirit of truth will show us all things and grant us courage and peace. Amen. People of God, body of Christ, sisters and brothers, the spirit of God's truth has come upon you to interpret the mysteries of eternal time. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Christ Jesus our Savior, and by the authority of the church, I declare to you the complete forgiveness of your sin. So let us be at peace with one another because of God's mercy. Please remain standing and let us sing uh, the doxology as we bring forward our gift, tithes, and offerings. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege it is to support the work that you're doing in this church. We support it through the giving of our time, our talents, and our treasures. May they be pleasing in your sight, and they may be about your glory and the building up of your kingdom. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me now in the prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, come again. again. As long, long ago, ago you inspired, inspired astonished, and confused the people, come, come to, to us now to fill, fill our ears, ears with the sound of your, your breath. breath. Fill, fill our, our eyes with the brilliance of your presence in each other. Fill, fill our, our hearts, hearts with, with your good word. word. Amen. Amen. The first lesson for today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Today is Pentecost, and for the Jews, it is an annual festival that they would have, where they would, many would come and gather in Jerusalem to celebrate. For the church, it is the birthday of the church, and we're going to read about that from our lesson in Acts, reading not the full story of that day, but at least the first part of that day, Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Corinthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Perigia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those, day, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents to, in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I really like Pentecost. It's a shame it's just a one week event in the, in the Christian calendar. But it reminds me of what God can do even through a small group of people. There were 120 people behind those locked doors where the church began. And inside those four walls, people were waiting and praying for who knew what. And I'm sure there was fear and anxiety along with excitement and anticipation. And, and then the wind blows and the tongues of fire descend and rest on the room's occupants and, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit and the doors are unlocked and, they, and the followers of Christ leave the room and take to the streets and are among the people talking in the native languages of the people that are out there. People who have gathered in Jerusalem from all over the world. At first they were mocked, these people must be drunk. But then Peter stands up and he delivers his message, this message from the prophet Joel that speaks of God pouring his spirit on all flesh where sons and daughters will prophesy and young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. And then he tells them about Jesus and Jesus' death and resurrection. And that day a new movement began. We call it the Christian church. So happy birthday, Christian church. You're almost 2,000 years old. And the church has come a long way in these past 2,000 years. 
from 120 believers up there in that room, that upper room, to following Peter's sermon that day, 3,000 new followers of Christ. And you read through the book of Acts and you see how the movement began to spread in Jerusalem and then further out into Judea and moved up a little bit to Samaria and then it moved out to, to Africa and then into modern day Turkey followed by modern day Greece and Rome. Today it is the largest religion in the world with followers in every country on earth. It's been a wild and crazy ride for the church. There have been times of rapid growth and times of divisions and splits and course corrections along the way. And, and unfortunately, there are terrible things that were done in the name of the church. And yet the church continues to move forward, to press forward. Yet today, some are talking of the church's demise. Christianity is being driven out of several of the countries in the Middle East, especially Iraq and Iran and Syria. Christians in many places in the world are being persecuted for their faith. But in Europe, we can't blame it on persecution. The church is dying in Europe, it seems. And that movement is coming to the United States where more and more people are no longer part of the church. Uh, people have better things to do. They find that the church is boring or irrelevant. I mentioned to you before the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, those who now pick as their religious affiliation none of the above, none of the, none, no faith uh, affiliation. And they are the fastest growing religious segment in our country. They number almost a third of the population. But I'm not ready to jump off the, uh, jump on the bandwagon of the church's total dis dis demise. The church is growing like wildfire in, <coughs> in South America, in Asia and Africa. Even in our own country, I believe that the spirit can be rekindled. Often the spirit works in small, almost unseen ways that we don't tend to recognize or acknowledge. We need eyes to see and ears to hear the Holy Spirit at work around us. Now I've been here a little over two years now and I wanna share some of the ways I've seen the Holy Spirit at work here. Ways that we might not have attributed to the Holy Spirit at the time. And yet I believe when we look back, we can say this has been the Holy Spirit at work. You might recall when I arrived in mid-April of 2020, the church was completely shut down due to COVID. The very first thing I had to do was figure out how we were going to do a worship service uh, that week. And that first service was actually videotaped on Saturday, posted online on Sunday. And um, it, it, uh, Caroline Hutchison was the one who, who uh, videotaped it. Melanie Limbach was here playing the organ. I don't remember if we sang, had any singing that day or not. I, I doubt we did. Uh, and I gotta confess that the one thing I remember about that service was I did that first sermon in here and the audio was just awful online. It's so echoey and you could hardly understand it. My wife quit watching it and said, no good, I can't understand what you're saying. Um, but it was posted online that Sunday and we had begun our online ministry. We kind of um, made adjustments as we went. I started preaching in the library as opposed to in here. We started adding various components to the service with a lay leader and, and someone singing the hymns and special music. Um, we started meeting again in person that August and, uh, and we had to make additional changes <laughs> as we started to meet in person, how to figure out how to do that. And, um, and then back in December, we had to stop worshiping again in, in person and did not do so for several months up until uh, Palm Sunday in 2021 or 20, yeah, whatever, get my years mixed up. Um, 
But we've been recording and online ever since. Our, our um, primary video people have been Heather Thompson and Jim Hutchinson and um, Matthew Crowen was helping out whenever uh, he was home from college. And um, they put in hours and hours of work uh, to get these worship services online. And today, I believe a work of the Holy Spirit, we live stream and it is a whole lot easier. And we have uh, uh, a tech person that uh, oversees it. We have uh, several more volunteers that, uh, that work in making all of this happen. And um, it's been, I think, a movement of the Holy Spirit, it still is. You may recall soon after I arrived, the Holy Spirit led us to start giving money to the Capitol School District to help some of the families that were being negatively impacted by COVID. And we gave several thousand dollars to aid these families. As the church was trying to figure out how to, how to live in a time of COVID, all the church meetings were being done on Zoom. There were no in-person meetings here, and there was definitely a learning curve in how we did this. And everyone uh, might not agree with this, but I believe the Holy Spirit was leading us when uh, we put up the Black Lives Matter sign. It originated out of IMPJ, our mission committee, and it was sent to session where it was agreed or voted unanimously to, to do. We were, um, we were stating our support for the unfair or unjust treatment of many African Americans following the George Floyd killing. Now, not everyone agreed with uh, the, the putting up of this sign. And uh, several folks voiced their disagreement. And we had a Zoom town hall meeting where the majority of participants agreed with the stand that was being taken by our session. And yet not everyone was satisfied with this and some have left the church, which I always find to be sad. Soon after this, our session voted to become a Matthew 25 church, a movement that's taking place in our denomination where we seek to eradicate systemic poverty, to dismantle structural racism and to revitalize the church. And we're still in the process of determining what that means and several of our people participated in the tool shed meetings where several churches from our community participated in conversations about race and racism. And myself and Charles Knox were some of the leaders of this conversation. We did a book study with the Presbyterian Church of the Covenant in Wilmington also dealing with racism. And both of these activities were done on Zoom and you get an idea of how the Holy Spirit was using Zoom technology to let the church uh, expand its ministries. One of the more significant works of the Spirit since I've been here was the COVID memorial we did last year, where we took those tubes, those cardboard tubes, and we made uh, columns that represented deaths from COVID within the state of Delaware over 1,600 at that time, uh, and the different uh, numbers each month. And uh, we, we did a dedication service last year on Pentecost here in our worship service. And then the next day we did one outside, or well, both of them were outside. We did another one that was open to the public. And our monument received great coverage in the, both the local and national press. Um, and we had people that were um, from the community that would put slips of paper inside the tubes of people that they, loved ones that they lost. And they told us of how meaningful this was to them and how grateful they were for what we had done. It was truly a Holy Spirit moment in our church. Shortly after this, our session had a retreat and we discussed what are the core values of our church? What are those things that hold us together? 
And we came up with the top five that we saw, we believed. One was belonging slash fellowship. One was mission. Another was worship. And then there was lifelong learning. And then there was justice slash reconciliation. And then Session did a town hall meeting and brought these before the congregation. And the congregation uh, affirmed these, these core values. And so Session said, we need to move on. And so they formed a small group to take these core values and to put together an identity statement that says who we are, a purpose statement of saying why we exist, and then a mission statement of what do we do. And once we had that in place, we, we started our mission study. And one of the important parts of that mission study is we had small groups that went and dealt with, talked and discussed and evaluated and analyzed these various statements so that we came out with revised statements that we think say who we are, why we exist, and what we do. And I want to read those to you. The identity statement is this. With gratitude, God keeps us continually reaching out to each other and to those beyond our congregation with kindness as we seek to answer Christ's call to serve. Our life together as a community of faith is grounded in scripture-based worship, which may take different forms of expression. We treasure our diversity, our mission-focused, valuing our local, national, and international outreach. Our church is deeply rooted, having been founded in 1714. We are part of the mainline denomination known as the Presbyterian Church USA. And then our purpose statement, we, we, we used an acronym using the word love. And the L is love God and love others, the very first or the greatest commandments that Jesus said. The O is offering spiritual growth and lifelong learning. The V is valuing diversity and striving for unity. And the E is embracing and serving our world. The mission statement is this. Our mission is to reach out to one another, our community, and the world with compassion and generosity. We are a Matthew 25 church, which means we focus activities to build congregational vitality, seek ways to dismantle structural racism, to work to eradicate systemic poverty. We consider ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ and invite all to join us. And after we finished going over these statements and agreed upon them, we were able to um, have this approved by session and then approved by the Committee on Ministers and uh, Churches, uh, which is the Presbytery Committee that oversees when we get ready to look for a new pastor. And that gave us the freedom to elect our pastor nominating committee. Another work I think was led by the Holy Spirit and um, they're going to be the ones conducting the search for our next pastor. I just uh, learned today that their work on the MIF, Ministry Information Form, is complete, waiting, I think, just two people's approval. Um, and then it will be posted online on the web page where uh, churches that are looking for pastors post these MIFs. And, and they'll re begin receiving names of uh, people that might uh, be our next pastor. So we need to be praying for this process that the Holy Spirit will continue to be leading and guiding the pastor nominating committee. And there are many other ways that the Holy Spirit has been at work over the past two years that I haven't mentioned. We've taken in some new members. We've had people continue to serve the church uh, doing special music when we weren't having congregational singing to um, be uh, lay leaders and ushers and greeters. We, uh, we finished the unglued project that we were participating in before the COVID struck. We did the holy cow surveys that helped interpret some of the things that were going on in our church. We did a new church picture directory. We've had various Bible studies and book studies uh, that have taken place. And we even have one coming up soon when helping hurts 
talking about how we deal with poverty and how we deal with how we do our mission. Um, we have a prayer group every Wednesday morning that's lifting up the church, but lifting up especially the, the, pre, the pastor nominating committee. And I'm sure there are others that I've not mentioned. So on this Pentecost Sunday, let us rejoice in the ways the Holy Spirit has led and directed us. And let us continue to be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit in our midst. May the fire be rekindled in this church now and tomorrow and each day forward so that we might be God's witnesses in this place and at this time. Amen. We come to the prayers of the people. We have a breath prayer this morning. Uh, we inhale, come Holy Spirit. Exhale, rekindle your fire within me. Come Holy Spirit, come. Rekindle your fire within me. So let us take a moment of breath prayer and then I'll pray. Holy Spirit, come and rekindle your fire within us. We thank you for the many ways you have been at work in our church. And we ask that this might continue. We would ask that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart willing to respond to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. And this morning, we do lift up our pastor nominating committee and the work that they have before them. We ask that you give them wisdom and guidance as they soon will be receiving names of possible candidates. May they find the best person to serve as the next pastor here. And in the meantime, be preparing us for this person and be preparing that person for us. As we think about what's going on in the world, we ask, oh God, how long will the senseless gun violence and continue and killing continue. It seems every day we hear of new mass shootings, even one last night. This craziness can't go on. And we pray that you might bring a stop to this and that you might work within our government leaders that they might do something to stem this violence that is occurring far too often. We wanna pray for an end to the pandemic. It seems just to continue on and on May it come to an end. We would lift up the shortage of baby formula and ask that those who need it will be able to obtain it and that the formula will soon be back in good supply. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and ask for the protection for those in harm's way and that you would provide the things that they need in the ways of food and water and shelter. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we pray for the church universal and ask that the good news of Jesus Christ will continue to spread and transform lives and communities. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now to the communion table it's been a the, part of the church from the very start. Um, Christians would gather in Jesus' name and through this meal would remember Christ's sacrifice on their behalf. So we join other Christians in proclaiming Jesus' death and resurrection through the celebration of this meal. So I would invite you now to join me for the invitation to the table. We come now to the Lord's table. Jesus instituted this meal the night before he was crucified and instructed his followers to eat this bread and to take from this cup to remember his death, which is for our forgiveness. We will come to this table not because we are perfect people, but rather because we are sinners in need of God's grace and forgiveness. So let all those who acknowledge Jesus as their Lord and Savior 
Come and partake of this meal. It's for you. Let us pray. We offer praise, worship, and thanksgiving to you, O God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, whose death is commemorated in this bread and cup. Stir our hearts, we pray, to recall his suffering on the cross. Let the image of his lonely ordeal arouse our own passions, that we may follow him obediently in our daily walk. Let us love and care and practice holiness, knowing that we shall eat and drink with him in the eternal kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name, evermore praising you and proclaiming, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. I would invite folks now, those able to stand and let us state what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come and judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. How this will work is you'll come down the center aisle. Um, Bill will be there to uh, let, release each aisle. Come down and uh, Steve will hand you a piece of bread. If you want gluten-free bread, we have that. You just need to let Steve know. I will give you a cup. You'll take it back through the side aisles, back to your seats, and then we will together um, partake of the elements. Thank you. The night before Jesus was crucified, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. Likewise, during the meal, he took the cup that this cup is the new covenant in my blood for the remission of sins. The Apostle Paul told us whenever we eat the bread and we drink from the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. So as people come forward, we will be singing uh, um, Spirit of the Living God as folks come forward and, and receive their, uh, their, the elements. So come on.
Jesus gave them the bread and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Likewise, he took the cup, said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood for the remission of sin. Take and drink. Let us pray. God, our help, we thank you for this supper shared in the spirit with your son, Jesus, who makes us new and strong, who brings us life eternal. We praise you for giving us all good gifts and pledge ourselves to serve you, even as in Christ you have served us. And let us join together in stating the prayer or praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So let us open our eyes, open our ears, and open our hearts to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And now may the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, guide you in the ways of God and fill you with the peace that only Christ can give. Go in peace. Amen.